Hi everyone, Arjunal Page today. I'm working in this Arjunal that I've made. Uh, this is assembled just back to back and I'm going to show you what I mean because I had a few questions about this and my black Arjunal and it's just taking whatever paper you want to work with and just folding it in half and starting to add one to another back to back like this I'm I'm making a lot of journals like that I like it it's easy and I don't need to stitch anything and I just need to put some a uh, glue and I can also add as much as I want because I'm also uh, putting cover only when I think I'm done and here I'm just attaching another page for this and that's how I get my journal now the, the next uh, thing is that it's really a uh, easy to work with because as long as I don't have a cover and I want to work on this page I can just make it like this so it will be even and I have a a smooth surface to work on I'm starting this page with a lot of uh, putting paint with a brayer I've got all kinds of blues and green and purple and even pink and I'm just going to play with it in building a big and interesting uh, background I'm putting the acrylic paint on um, on craft foam I found out that I like it that it gives me more the, the paint spreads uh, better when I'm putting it on the craft foam and I'm just spreading the paint quite randomly and I also, oops, I'm pushing a, my brayer a, to pick more paint that is on the craft foam. So just putting paint and just, now I know the my brayer is quicking, couldn't find the WD-40. <laughs> and my other brayer uh, just broke so that's what i have to work with so sorry about the squeaking i'll try to be quick about it now i'm not a uh, cleaning in between they are uh, all at least right now from the same family i don't need to start a uh, cleaning the mat the, the or the brayer and i don't really uh, even care which color i put first i'm just playing around and basically covering my page with all kinds of shades of blue and partly green at least now let's see let's go for a little bit more green now each time i'm putting a small amount here and i'm spreading it so to be gentle here on my page if i'm not spreading it it will uh, put a blob of paint on the page So now I've got also green. You can pick any colors you like. Moving back to some light blue.
the only problem is that here where the crease is it doesn't take <laughs> much a color maybe I'll do something like that just to add a little bit this is quite random there is no there are no rules just put paint wherever you think it's needed moving on to some a light purple lavender I think it really doesn't matter use whatever you have play with the colors I'm putting it gently I don't want it to overwhelm my page it's more of an accent to the page and not looking right now for the page to turn purple I want more right now at least I want more of the blues and greens okay moving on uh, I think I need just a little bit more of this you can go at it as long as you want and if you don't like it there is always gesso so be brave and play with the colors until you're satisfied with what you have okay moving on I want a little bit a magenta here now I'm going for the magenta and a purple and even some neon pink okay spreading it and as you can see I didn't clean and now just very very <laughs> gently Now it doesn't look like magenta because it's it blends with the other colors and as I said I didn't clean the brayer I don't want to clean it I have several places with white and I'm going to be brave and leave it be <laughs> some purple You see how the background is changing with the colors, but still I've got a lot of the un under colors showing through. Okay, a little bit of neon pink. Okay, spreading and again very very <laughs> gently I'm adding in few places I think it gives light to a uh, page without overwhelming without turning into a complete mess of pink okay really like it now I want a little bit of white I like when I'm doing this a kind of technique I like to finish with white it's like it's 
brings everything together and it also mutes everything a little bit and again without cleaning the brayer or this uh, craft foam it's toning everything down and making everything come together but again this is just personal preference and you do what you like Okay, I really like it, maybe just a little bit more here, and I'm leaving it be, it needs to uh, dry before I continue, I'm planning on stamping on it, so it needs to be dry, I'll be back. I'm back, so I want to stamp here, it's dry, and I've picked uh, some stamps it really doesn't matter I personally like to have some either text numbers I like circles uh, anything goes and right now I'm going to use this stamp and I'm going to stamp randomly most don't know if most of it but uh, some of it is going to get covered it's only so to add detail to the background so more interest more detail so it really doesn't matter what uh, stamps you have just have fun with it so next something with numbers I'm using Momento Tuxedo Black it's a permanent uh, ink pad You can also stencil if you don't have uh, this kind of stamp. If you have it in stencil, then do it with stencil. Again, it's just for added details and fun. And it really doesn't matter. I'm not even uh, concerned if it, if it gives me a fine print of the stamp. Just playing with the placement. Like so. And maybe just I've got the flower here. As I said, not concerned about having a great print adjust for added detail and interest like so moving on from uh, this now I'm going to use a stencil on here and this is the stencil I'm uh, going to use uh, this one I made um, it's, I don't know if you can see, but it's not even <laughs> symmetrical. I just wanted some kind of a mandala, and that's what I've done. I want a, to stencil here with gesso. So where is my gesso? I could have swore I put it here. Okay. Gesso and... I'm taking a makeup sponge, dipping into the gesso and dabbing it so I don't have too much excess. And let's see. I think I'll go, or maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah, like this, I think. So just putting it on and start dabbing, as I said, some of it is going to get covered. 
but I think all the layers are just worth it. I know that uh, some of you <laughs> don't like when everything gets covered and not everything is going to get covered but that's the whole idea and it all just adds to the whole So I'm going to continue doing this, here it is, like this it's going to be, and then another one here, and then I'll come back. So I finished stenciling here, and now I want some splatter, I've got some neon pink and some black acrylic paint, and a fan brush, I've added a little bit of water. To each so it would be easier to do the splatter and I'm just going all over and splattering and switching to the black Okay, I think this is it in terms of splatter. This needs to be dry. I am moving on. I've a uh, printed a um, cat silhouette from the internet. There are a lot of free printables out there and traced it on black uh, Bristol paper. Uh, you can do it on white and just uh, uh, paint it black, whatever you have. And now I want again to stencil on, on top of it with gesso. I'm just a... I, I thought at first to use the same stencil that I used in the background, but then I figured it would be too much of the same thing. So I'm switching to a, a different kind of stencil. Here we go. Let's see. I've got this one and I want to stencil on top of this cat and just trying to figure out how I want to go about it. Let's go like this. So again I'm taking a little bit of gesso, dabbing it so I won't have too much excess and just going like this. So I will have an interesting <laughs> cat as a focal point. I will need, <clears throat> sorry, I will need to move the stencil uh, so I will also have details here on, on the head and here. But right now I'm doing a, the center mass of this cat. <laughs> Okay, let's see, yeah, it needs just a little bit more gesso in, ser in several places, so it won't look gray. Okay, better, so I'm moving it like this and continuing stenciling you can also if, if you like you can take posca pens uh, or a jelly air uh, jelly pens jelly roll pens whatever they are called and add some details to uh, your cat or whatever you, you decide to use a focal point it doesn't have to be a cat i just really really wanted to <laughs> to make a, a cat as my focal point so again moving it here and here we go And 
just a little bit more here. Okay, good enough. My stencil moved, but it's quite fine. I can deal with it. And if it doesn't, I can also take a permanent black pen and just cover whatever just moved and wasn't in place. Just like that. So it's not a critical now i'm not sure i thought about a yeah i want to uh, color it where i have the gesso i want some color here and this is still wet all the splatter so we'll have to uh, wait for the background and i wanted i want the cat to stand out so i'm thinking I'm going over the gesso with neon uh, markers, highlighters, whatever. And let's see. Something like that. Just going to play with the colors. Really didn't. Uh, it's not planned. Okay, so I'm going to continue. Not sure where this is going. <laughs> I'm just going to put some color like so and we'll see where it gets me I'll be back I'm back so I've got my background I've got my psychedelic cat that is going to go here now I just want to uh, ink around the edges just to give a little bit of framing to the page I'm using a black ink pad and I'm just going generously in, I think it will look a more dramatic like this, so <laughs> that's why I'm doing it. Some smudged black on the edges and I think it frames the whole thing better yeah like this let's uh, just glue my cat some words that I want to put here so again some uh, glue is needed they are practically the words are practically with the same colors I have on the page I wanted them there but uh, I didn't want them to uh, still the the show of the page inspired the dreams of tomorrow just a little bit quirky yeah something like that and this is it basically that's my page and I hope you liked it. I'm really uh, 
I really like all the details. I'll bring it closer to the camera so you will see what I'm talking about and why I went and done all that. I really like it. <laughs> so thank you for watching. Thank you for leaving me comments below. I hope uh, this will inspire you to do something like that. Thank you for watching. I'll be seeing you in my next video. Bye for now.